That's it, man. That's a wrap. It's a good shoot. Um, have you got your car keys? Yeah, I've got your keys. Yeah, man. Oh, so, so these are oh these are your keys. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you do me a favour? Um, there's a box in the boot of my car. Can you uh, get that out? There's yeah. something in there. Yeah, sure. Just find it and. I have my car. I'm taking this. Oh, no, and I'm just checking. Why is it not starting? What? Why is it? Have you got a ghost? Yeah, man. Oh, we found it. This is embarrassing. Have you, have you got a ghost? Yeah, man. I don't know what you're trying to do. Why are you in the driver's seat for? Oh, I was just checking something, man. Yeah, are you sure? Ah! Ah! You're watching Carnity, my name is Mizan and today I'm comparing my BMW M135i against an F80 M3. This is not the competition model, it's the OG one. In this series I've covered how many cars against my M135i, two of them were AMGs. So it's about time I finally got an actual M car to compare it against. This may be the last episode in the series, so it's worth giving my car a proper send-off. As you guys are probably aware, the M135i is not an M car. It's an M performance car, or also known as an M light. Whereas the M3 is a proper M car. Now, what is an M light or M performance car? It's basically BMW's answer to Audi's S range. So just like how you have an S3 and an RS3, this is BMW's answer to that. Lesser performance cars like the M135i and the Audi S3, for example, have less running costs than an actual full fat car like the M3. You've got to have a fat wallet to really afford one of these. Not just to even buy one, but stuff like tires, servicing, it all goes up when you own a car of this standard. So this car is meant to give you that flavor of this with lower running costs. These cars are very weak when it comes to suspension and brakes, if you ask me. They're just not that of a standard such as the M3, and that's where these cars really crumble. If you were to take both of these cars on track, the M3 could just slaughter the track every single time, because this car is just not built for it. This is a very good street car, if you ask me, and it gives you a, a little flavor of something like this. It's worth noting that M135i has the N55 engine, whereas the M3 has the S55 block. What does that mean? The M department essentially took the engine out of my car and developed it further to meet their standards. So as I mentioned, my car has got the N55 engine, which is a three litre straight six with a twin scroll turbo. From factory, it pushes 320 brake horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. It sends its power to the rear wheels and it's an open diff. So it sends its power 50-50 on both sides, regardless of slip and it's paired with the amazing ZF 8-speed gearbox. This OG M3, on the other hand, is pushing 425 brake horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque from a three liter straight six, but this time it's a twin turbo. That's the main difference between both engines. The other thing is the internals are gonna be a lot more stronger because it's been developed by BMW M department. This car sends its power to the rear wheels. And again, another difference is this has got an LSD, a limited slip differential. So what that means is when it sends its power and one wheel is slipping, it sends 100% of the power to the other wheel. So that way you can really get yourself out of some nasty situations. This car is also paired with a seven speed DCT gearbox, which makes the car a lot more aggressive and it makes it a lot more purposeful compared to the ordinary everyday torque converter. In terms of price, you can pick up a pre-facelift M135i for around 13 and a half thousand with decent mileage. An F80 M3 is going to set you back at least 30 grand for an OG one. You have to argue, is the F80 M3 double the car? Well, to be fair, there is one thing you could do. You could buy one of these and put some money behind it and potentially be just as good as this. The first mod will be putting an LSD in, changing the suspension, and do the stage two plus as well as the modifications needed to get there that's only going to cost you what maximum of five six grand all in to get all those things done and you're still saving so much more money compared to buying one of these so you have to ask yourself is this car worth it or is there some serious magic beans in there in terms of modifications both cars are oem plus they've been very lightly modified just to look that little bit more aggressive but nothing too much the main modification i want to talk about is this car having a stage one tune and it's now pushing 500 brake horsepower and 675 newton meters of torque. That's a big jump over the stock figures. And now, without further ado, it's time to go for a drive. We'll start off with the M135i. No! <laughs> now in 
the 135. I want to give a nice warm welcome to Manuel. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome, man. Um, I kid, his name's not Manuel, despite what his number plate says. It's actually in reference to his surname. But I'm telling you, it says Manuel, man. No. It says Manuel. Stop kid, Stop lying. So, before the M3, you actually had an M light before, wasn't it? What was that? Yeah, I had a M140i. An M140i with a beautiful B58 engine. Yeah. And you weren't running stock power as well, were you? No, I was running stage two. Stage two power. I'm very scared to say to you what is this is like compared to that because the B58 is an actual weapon. Yeah. Then on top of that, stage two power. So, what's your thoughts about this car? I mean, the initial drive, I mean, First, when I had the M1, 40, the M140, sorry, yeah, um, I was running uh, stock power. Oh dear lord, we really oh. don't, we really don't want that. Please don't do that to my car. I won't do it to yours. <laughs> Bloody hell, that is literally that like he went and because you can't even get the car out. Yeah. You're stuck. Back to what I was saying. Uh, so I had stock power on the M140i for about a week. Yeah, and I enjoyed it, mm. but. Uh, after having loads of different cars with different uh, power outputs, uh, I thought, why not go stage two? Not even stage one, just straight yeah, to stage two. Yeah, stage two, because it's just the intercooler and yeah. the downpipe, isn't it? Yeah, so that, that's all i done. And uh, it was a complete a complete change. Yeah? I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was drivable, to be honest. Okay, the, it's too twitchy. Yeah, too twitchy. Because I think you got to have an LSD at one point or another. Yeah, it's the, got yeah the car didn't have an LSD, so every time I put my foot down, it was twitching, it was losing control. Yeah. To be honest, after, well, I had it for about two months. Yeah. And uh, only get those two months, I'd say I'd never experienced the full power of the car. <laughs> you couldn't put it down? I couldn't put it down. So we're doing comfort driving right now, so for you to get a feel of the car. So what's your thoughts, man? What do you think about this car Initially so Initially driving it, it's so smooth. In what sense? Well, I never had stock suspension on my car, so okay. it was always a rough ride. Okay. And this is pretty much an OEM. Factory yes, yeah, car yes. and it, it's so smooth. It just feels like a normal one series. It, you could say that a normal one series, with just with the just with the extra power. So do you prefer that than rather than having some stiff? Honestly, I I do prefer this. M lights have to have that daily uh, daily usability about exactly, them. If yeah. they don't have that, then what are they good for? Because exactly. they're not M cars, like you said, exactly. they're not. So yeah, yeah. they need to do both. So you are actually preferring this over the. So in terms of drive. You're, you prefer this over the 140, but let's be clear, you're not comparing it against a stock 140, exactly, yeah. it's a stage two one. Yeah. For example, when I drove a 140, engine-wise, I loved it, mm. but everything else I loved about the 135, like the steering, for example, I loved it, I prefer the steering in this, it's more heavy, it feels more yeah. weighted. I mean, we're only in comfort mode, but you can feel it, the steering, aren't you? Yeah, I remember from the 140i, it was it was very light. Yeah. Like, I could I could probably spin the whole wheel with a finger. Yeah, exactly, but it this, was... in comfort mode, it still gives that feeling, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, and this car as well, it doesn't feel turbocharged because no. low down, there's no like, there's no torque. Not not as in there's no torque because of a turbo lag. Like, there's no torque because the car has like a peak RPM rev range, whereas the B50 is so strong yeah. from so low down, yeah, isn't exactly, it? Yeah. Like this feels like an NA car where you have to wring its neck yeah, to get yeah. the power out. And that's what I feel like. That's what the N55 is good for. If yeah. if you don't like turbocharged cars, mm. the N55 is such a good lump. If you yeah. ask me. Mm. So I'm now putting Zishan into sports mode. I'm gonna say this to you right now, Zishan. I haven't got a lot of tread on my tires, yeah. so I apologize for that, yeah? <laughs> How does the response feel? It's, it's, it's bang on. Really? It, it feels like it's it's a tuned gearbox. Really? In all honesty, yeah. Trust me, sometimes you don't need to. That's why people say, tune your yeah. car, man. Tune. I'm like, I'm happy, man. When I really go for it, I go for it. Yeah, yeah. It does feel slow to me when I drive you, people like you, like York. Like, yeah. Come on, I've driven some big cars on the channel. It does, but for you, it's completely new experience. Mm. You can appreciate the power it's already pushing. How's the steering? It's gone a bit stiff, I can feel it. Yeah, but from comfort mode. You can control the car. Like, yeah, but do you like the fact it's gone stiff? Yeah. It feels like the, it feels like a good old days yeah. uh, hydraulic steering. <laughs> As the M3 compared to that, the M3 is, is a lot stiffer. But then you would, you would expect, expect that, that exactly. You would expect that from an M4. But the 140 yeah, was horrendous. Yeah, that was, was bad because even in sports mode, as the, as the as the rear wheels are playing with you, exactly. it's so light, you're doing this, and you're like, yeah. I can't feel my wheels. <laughs> I felt like the M140, they only showed love to the power, the yeah. engine, nothing else. Yeah. How does that feel, that pickup? Beautiful. Come on, come on, you're like 200 horses up from yeah. me almost. How is this feeling compared to that? 
Can the you... response is bang on, the power's bang on, it pushes through, there's no delay. delay. No you, there's lag. no turbo lag, like, is it? You can't believe this is a yeah. turbocharged car, yeah, exactly. isn't it? Yeah, it don't feel like a turbocharged car. <laughs> yeah, honestly, this actually feels good. I'm, really? not, even, I'm not even capping right now. Oh, bro. wow. An M3 owner has just said my M life feels good. Like, I mean, I was expecting to get slaughtered today, yeah? I was like, it's a good thing I've got a red leather interior because my blood's going to be all over in a minute. Like, it's going to be slaughtering me, saying, your car's this, your car's that. Yeah. So for you to come out and say, because I always say that, but it's easy for me to say that as an owner. Oh, yeah, yeah he's bigging his car up. Yeah. But when someone like you is coming from a 140 and yeah. then an M3 to say, nah, man, these are good. Yeah, nah, These are good little packages. <laughs> Look, 13 and a half grand. Mm. You so, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. One thing I do miss is just, you know, the actual size of the car. Yeah, you can just yeah, I agree, I agree. Go for it, man. Can you feel it skipping a bit? Yeah, ever so slightly. Yeah. No, obviously, because it, it's not pushing ridiculous power like the M, you're obviously still able to control it. That's good. I feel good. Yeah. Really good, yeah. For a car that's two, nearly yeah, 200 yeah. horses down, yeah. But you you can really feel this car. You have to wring its neck to get the power out, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So you actually but that held that held really well. Yeah, it does. Cause Road it, slightly wet. Sli slightly but wet, but it's all right. Yeah. No, nah, that that was that was good. Yeah. Now in the uh, M3, and um, although let's be honest, on paper the interiors of our car are very similar. Obviously, the one series, the 135, is like a shrinked version of the interior, the cabin, the dashboard layout. Yeah. This does feel a lot more special. It yeah. does. I, I can. There's a sense of occasion when I jump into this. Like you, my car, and that's BMW full. It feels like a normal one series, even though it's an M. Like it yeah. does feel normal. This does feel special, and part of that reason is these beautiful seats. Yeah. They look stunning. Yeah. They, they do, and they're holding me so tight right now. Your dials, man, it has this sort of classic look because your 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 red line is illuminated, yeah. isn't yeah. it? In terms of driving the DCT, look, when you're driving calm, it does do what it's supposed to do. It's yeah. not it's not acting too jerky. Yeah. Yeah. How is it around town? It can be it, a bit. It, it can, yeah. It's a bit jerky, and you're yeah. doing this, that, and the other. It's, so there's ultimately there's two clutches, and yeah. they're both trying to figure out whether you're going to upshift or exactly. downshift, and yeah. they're constantly trying to talk to each other. Yeah. But when you're hammering on, I'm sure this just works amazing. I can feel like we're hunkered onto the ground. Yeah. Like I can feel like we're you're planted like this. Yeah. I, I I can feel it. We're doing this right now. In my car, you don't feel it as such. Yeah. To be fair, a lot of people do daily drive in freeze, don't they? Yeah. There yeah. are people that do. It's, it's not something that's out of the ordinary. You've obviously got a stock exhaust, which makes a massive difference because the car isn't obscenely loud. One thing I love about the M3 though, man, is your arches, man. It's like, it's just so wide, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, before getting the uh, M3, I was considering the M4. Mm. Nah, uh, the, the arches on the M4 yeah. are too narrow. Yeah. It's not wide enough. The too only M4 that I would have would be the CS. Yeah. Because the M3 CS isn't as nice as the yeah. M4 CS. Go over the arches. Yeah. It's like, it's <laughs> you can't get over them. Yeah. You just can't. You, you just can't go over them. I mean, it's just like. And even if you look in the wing mirrors, you can actually see them flared out. Look at that. <laughs> Why are you doing that, man? <laughs> Bro, I was waiting for you to say something, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, it's, it's Larry. Yeah. Whoa, this engine is strong. You can really feel it. But I'd say that the, um, the stage one kind of brought it to life a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my God. Nah, this is a different animal. Now you you know what I know we said you could technically do all the suspension stuff and you're yeah. right the M135 is more yeah. livable but this is an animal <laughs> that's crazy no nah, that's crazy listen there are people that stand by these F F F80s they love them to death they will talk about them all day long now you know what yeah I'm so scared of the wheel man yeah. like, I'm holding on with dear life. That's why these cars at the factory came out with 425. Because anything more than that, your rear wheels just light up. And you're running PS4 tires, aren't you? Yeah. I, you know what? I'm not surprised you've told me that this car is can be a bit hard to manage, isn't it? You've told me that oh, yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah. to manage something yeah. like that. The, 
Like, for example, you want to go on a drive, but it's sometimes too much power for the road, isn't yeah. it? I get that because there's always that fear that the rear is just going to swing on you, isn't it? Yeah, even on a good day, say hot weather, like if it's hot, tyres are hot, it's, it, will still, it will still kick out. It's, it, it's constantly skipping, it's constantly skipping. But your suspension is so good. This is the thing about this car, it's not just the engine. It's the way everything comes together yeah, yeah. and that's what it is about the M140 yeah, that just didn't gel with you. Yeah. This is a very very strong engine. Yeah. You know what, this, 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 this is what's crazy about this car. If, if this car is like this, what is the, um, what's the S58 like? Exactly. Oh my god, it's that like VTEC man, it's that like Thanos, isn't it? <laughs> now I'm a bit comfortable with the car. Yeah. <laughs> you feel the feels as a passenger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so direct that whenever I aim my steering wheel, <laughs> this car is crazy, man. See, this is a crazy monster. <laughs> Another thing as well is competition variants of the FAE and FAE2 and FAE3, whatever, they're worth a lot more than one of these aren't they oh yeah they're uh, worth a lot more it's not even like a small i'd say about eight to ten grand more exactly but with a stage one two like this yeah honestly mate is there any point look around these cyclists i'm scared to block my four because i could hit them i could swing them with the car oh my god yeah this this car is amazing this car is nuts i have been sleeping on f80 <laughs> I have. I'm surprised this whole time you've never driven one. I know. Is it me or does it sound a bit like a diesel sometimes as well? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know when diesel was at top end? Yeah, that, yeah. that diesel <laughs> noise. But it's only because it's got that twin turbo, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It does muffle the noise. It does sound a bit like Absis 335D. <laughs> so the 3 Series is a very practical car. Yeah. You take that, you had a big engine, you have a 340i. Mm -hmm. But it just lacks a bit of oomph. Put driving M3 and it's got everything you want. Yeah. what man you're a proper m guy i know that yeah. every time we've had chats about cars and we've spoken about amgs and yeah. you said it like nah m all day all day yeah, man. and it's all about the way it makes you feel it and the way yeah. it drives isn't it if it, it feels special it just i have to say there is this is my first m and i can already say that the way it drives is spot on look at that lovely bendy road up ahead yeah. national speed limit road with this car Ooh. now you know what this is special yeah there is there is m performance cars i say it all the time it's it's a it's a normal car with a big engine mm -hmm. whether it's a 135 or two 240 or 340 whatever it is it's a it, it's just a normal car with a big engine you know yeah. these there's just they're so special mm -hmm. there's something about them you know that you can't take that away from it Once you get used to the car and the way it yeah. reacts, you, you can you can actually use the power on tap, isn't it? Yeah. It's a shame that E-Class didn't do it. <laughs> That's the fourth time we passed it. <laughs> compare this to mm. and it's I don't know how people are gonna react yeah but like a 335d right yeah. low down it pulls like a damn train doesn't yeah, it yeah this car has that but then it has that that oomph at the end that diesel cars don't have because yeah. they have no their red line so quickly yeah. mm. this car continues yeah what a machine that's probably the best way to put it BMW say the letter M is the most powerful letter in the alphabet after driving the M3 I have to say I agree the M135i is no slouch, it's an amazing all-rounder. Your normal one series when you need it to be, but has a fair amount of goal when you're present with a lovely bit of road. The M3 on the other hand, is designed to annihilate it, and is the ultimate driving machine. If you can afford an M car, you should go for it with no hesitation. The M light just doesn't come close, it's just a taster pack essentially. 
I know so many people that started out with an MLI and ended up with a full fat M car. So essentially, it boosted M car sales. Not everyone can afford an M car or the maintenance costs. And an M light is more than enough to put a smile on your face. But if you're lucky to be able to get into an M car, grab the opportunity with both hands. Kudos to BMW for creating their M performance range, allowing people like myself a way into the brand and somehow making the lineup that sits above it just that bit better and still worth every single penny. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you soon. But before I go, here's a rev off between both cars. Oh.